Hey guys, Denise with Lazy K Mountain Homestead. Hope you're doing well. It's been a while since I did a video. I thought I would get back on here. Having a little health issues, so um, my videos are probably few and far between, but I'm going to try to do some good videos when I do them. Uh, when I find out what's really going on with me, I'll let y'all know. But right now, we're just waiting on things to happen. So anyway, what I'm doing today is something really exciting. My friend Kathy and I went and picked up strawberries yesterday. Um, I had ordered some from the Baxter, um, Tennessee Future Farmers of America. And I always try to uh, help the kids out. And I thought I got a great deal. These are Plant City strawberries. Let me show you. Let me put this down. This is a whole flat. Eight cartons. And, I mean, any one of these quality Plant City strawberries from Plant City, Florida. Look at them. I mean, look. They're even ripe on the bottom. You know when you go to the store and you're looking at strawberries, you always want to look at the bottom and the sides to see if any of them aren't ripe. Which, like, probably 95% aren't. So, anyway, there's eight of these and they're one pound. So, this is eight pounds of strawberries. So, what we're going to do today is canned strawberries and um i'm doing this because uh i usually freeze strawberries but a lot of times you know they get tucked back in the back of your freezer and then you find them and you thaw them out and they're kind of icky the flavor is still there but the um color has faded and they're a really weird texture and as y'all know we eat with our eyes first and our tongue and things like that so when you're looking at something think about it when you're looking at a plate of food in a magazine or whatever and you're like oh man that looks good or oh man gross I wouldn't eat that that's eating with your eyes first so with canning strawberries we're gonna use hot pack and what that's gonna do is keep the color it's gonna form its own juice of course we're gonna use white sugar um, this is just canning. This is not pie filling. I was going to do pie filling, but I didn't have any clear gel, which you need for strawberries. Uh, it's a refined cornstarch and there's none locally around me and I didn't have time to order it to get here to do these strawberries without them starting to, um, go bad. Cause you know, strawberries are kind of a fragile fruit. So time is of the essence. Oh man, they smell so good. But anyways, getting back to the uh, canning process, it's going to be a boiling water bath. And uh, what we're going to do first, and it's the hardest part, believe it or not, as in any fruit, when you're processing fruit, we are going to have to take each and every one of these beautiful, gorgeous strawberries. I mean, look at that. I don't even think my camera's picking up how red this is. It's so beautiful smells so good <laughs> these look so good they look plastic and yeah I'm drooling but anyways what we're gonna do is we're gonna cap each one of these strawberries make sure there's no blemishes and then we are gonna put them in uh, low um, containers uh, not uh, not a big pan we're gonna put it in something like this I'm, I've got three of these Pyrex dishes low profile that was the word I wanted and we are going to go ahead and just layer them in there uh, because you don't want it to be crushed because uh, we are going to have to boil them at one point uh, to make the hot pack, uh, but you don't boil them for long. But what I'm going to do is cap the strawberries, put them in these, these uh, low profile dishes. And for every four cups of strawberries, you're going to, um, use one half to one cup of white sugar. And that depends on your taste for sweetness and also the sweetness of the strawberries. And these, let me just go ahead and cut this. I want to show you. Look at how perfect that is. It's so wonderful. Kathy and I each had one yesterday before we got on the road to come home. And we were like, oh, these are the best strawberries ever. But anyway, um, we're going to do that. 
and I've got everything out here for that. I'm using, actually going to use a recipe out of this book called Putting Food By. That's an old term. And um, this is a really neat book. A friend of mine gave this to me. And um, I use it when I can. It's got tons and tons. If you guys can pick it up on Amazon or um, it's an old book. Um, let me see what the print is on this. Because um, that's a very old term. Okay, the last printing was 91, so we're talking over 30 years ago, and the first printing was 73. Yeah, putting food by. That's putting food up, canning, smoking, preserving, um, dehydrating, um, yeah, anything you can think of by putting food up for another time. So, and that's basically what homesteading is, prepping, taking care of yourself. And in this world that we live in now, I think it's important that we learn how to put food by. So this is the recipe I'm going to use. And it definitely says use hot peck only because that actually preserves the flavor. The texture will be a little bit soft, but it, they'll be whole. So they will still retain um, their, their texture, but they'll be a little bit soft, just like... Um, when you macerate a, a berry for strawberry shortcake or something, you know, it's a little bit soft. And basically what we're going to do when we cap all these, which is taking that off the uh, green and the chickens love them, by the way, I don't have a capper. I'm just going to use a knife and we just put them in our, our low profile dishes. We're going to cover them with sugar, cover them with plastic, let them sit for two to four hours. Basically they're macerating. And then we are going to go ahead and proceed on with that. It's a boiling water bath. I've got seven quart jars ready. Make sure they're clean and uh, without blemishes, without cracks. And make sure you've got plenty of sugar. So let's get started. A lot of, lot of talking. Sorry about that. But I just wanted to kind of let you guys know what we were doing. So I've got eight of these. I'm so excited. Um... I've got a just a regular bowl I'm going to go ahead and put them in and then I've got this little dish here that I'm going to put the caps in that way I'm kind of organized and I've got a four quart uh, measuring cup over there that I'll use once I get this full and we'll go from there okay so all we're going to do easy easy process it just takes time that's all let me go ahead and put this over here hopefully that window doesn't there you go. Kind of take away with, it's bright out there, but I don't have a curtain that goes down. So you can either just go ahead and pull that off, but you still have that little green part in there and you want all of that out. You want to make sure that you don't have any hard centers. And that is according to the recipe, the book. So I don't think I'll have any of them. Now you see you've got that little bit of white there. I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. Just kind of cut through like that. That way it's nothing. No hard centers. Gosh, these smell so good. Oh. <laughs> That's amazing. And you know, I love fruit. And we've got strawberries. I actually have some more strawberries on order with gurneys. Oh, and while you're, while you're uh, cutting... Inspect your strawberry and make sure there's no white mold or any kind of blemish because you don't want that because that can affect your canning process. So these I just got yesterday. And let's see if you can see that. It's kind of just like maybe a little bruise right there. You see that? I'm going to cut that away because with strawberries, that bruise could possibly affect your canning and it's going to be a boiling water bath. It's not pressure canning. You don't want to pressure can these because they would actually be mush. And I'm not going to make jam because we are uh, more apt to eat strawberries this way with strawberry pie, which is what I'm going to make. Hopefully I'll get that done in this video too. Once I can these strawberries, I'm going to make a pie so I can show you guys how easy it is to use these canned strawberries and not be worried about it. 
Now see that little end there? That's just part of the strawberry, how it developed. But I'm going to cut that off. because I don't want that in there to affect any anything of my, my canning process to not can properly, seal properly. A couple more bruises. You know, you're going to have bruises with any fruit because they're packed, they're packaged. These small ones, I'm just going to leave whole. I may just go ahead and leave most of them whole anyway. So this is what I'm going to do. Now this one is a little less ripe. And I'm actually going to go ahead and cut it all the way down where there's none of that white on there. It, it's just me. But that's also what that recipe says. Make sure there's none of the white because that's um, not really a um, fully ripe top there. So I'm going to go ahead and get all these done. And I will be back as soon as I've got them done. And then we'll go ahead and put them in our, our dishes, put our sugar on there. We'll measure, them out, measure our sugar and we'll go from there. So I'll see you in a little bit. Hey guys, okay, I'm back. I've got all the strawberries capped and in this glass bowl. And I saved that for really nice fun for Willis when he gets home tomorrow. So I wanted him to have some fresh strawberries from Plant City. Look at those. The biggest ones I could find. They are just absolutely, look at the color and the shine on them. So I'm going to stick them in the fridge. Whoops. I don't know what that was. But anyways, I guess I knocked a strawberry down. What I'm going to do now is just go over to the sink. And, uh, well, will they keep falling off? <laughs> they must be jumping ship. I'm going to go over to the sink, and I'm just going to rinse them off really lightly just to make sure there's no sand or anything, you know, um, from when they were picked. And then I'll be right back. Okay, back from the sink. They are all... Just rinsed off. I put them in my colanders and just rinsed them off, free of any sand. These were really, really clean, but I just did that just for good measure. So now what we're going to do is measure out four cups. And this is a four cup measure, which is really handy. Um, and we're just going to measure out four cups of strawberries. Whoops, there's one that jumped ship again. I'll have to rinse him off or eat him. And... Uh, then what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is a really good, not really, maybe a little heapy, not, okay, there's four cups. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that in this one. And I think I can go ahead and put another four cups, maybe, in there. But anyways, you see, um, I can do two layers, it says, from this book, putting by. It says, I'll actually read it to you. It says, strawberries, no shortcuts in this recipe. All right, this is actually a blue ribbon recipe. All right, wash and hold perfect strawberries that are red and ripe, firm without any white or hollow centers. Measure berries using one half to one cup of sugar for each four cups of berries. Spread the berries and sugar in shallow pans in thin alternating layers cover with wax paper or foil i'm going to use plastic because i don't have any wax paper and I, I don't like foil touching fruit for some reason i don't know it's just my thing and plastic wrap probably wasn't uh well we had it back in those days but maybe they just didn't use it wax paper was a real big thing um and you know it's kind of hard to find wax paper but anyway Cover uh, with wax paper or foil if necessary as protection against insects. <laughs> well, there's no insects in my house. And let stand at room temperature for two to four hours, then turn into a kettle and simmer for five minutes in their own juice. This is what creates the hot pack. We will go to that part of the recipe when it's time. But what we're going to do right now is just keep measuring out our four cups. 
and this has a little bit higher sides I've got three of these dishes baking dishes I think it's gonna work out perfect so and like I said this was just about eight pounds of strawberries except for the four that I um whoops get over there saved out for Willis poor thing he misses all the fun doesn't he all right so that's a lot of strawberries in here you know when I was um capping them and putting them in this bowl I was thinking oh I'm not gonna have enough strawberries but it says eight eight pounds is what we actually needed so that worked out perfect okay all right and I'm gonna go ahead and put that enough strawberries to fill this which actually comes out to yeah so this is uh eight cups in this one let's see if I can get eight cups in that one so I will put one cup of sugar because I'm going to use a half a cup of sugar per uh four cups of strawberries because these are very very sweet even though I do like my strawberries to sweet be sweet whenever you're going to use them uh, for your pie or strawberry shortcake or whatever you're going to use these for at a later date uh, they are canned in a simple syrup and you're also probably going to add sugar to them so you don't want to over sweeten these now that's my opinion okay there is four more cups I'm going to pour it in this one just kind of trying to make a single layer as much as possible. Okay, so there. Look at all the strawberries. Yum! I measured out one cup of sugar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle half of this on them and half on there. I mean, I'm just eyeballing it. Oh boy, this is going to be so good. So basically, you know, what you're doing when you put the sugar on here, it creates a maceration, which is the strawberries kind of um, just shrinking a little bit in their own juice. The, the sugar, for some reason, draws the juice out and it just makes for lovely. And I'll tell you, be honest, it's going to be hard for me not to eat these. So I've got those two done. And I have got one more that I think will be perfect here. Let me just move that. And then we'll see how many strawberries I've got here. This may be a little bit off as far as another eight cups. Remember, this might just be, well, I think this is just going to be four cups. So this is perfect. Wow, that's great. See, and if I hadn't saved those four out, I would have too many. Okay, so there's another four cups. Perfect, and that's a smaller dish. I'm going to go ahead and put a half a cup of sugar. And this is a, a cup measure, but I'll just eyeball a half a cup. So there we go. I won't need all that. But. And we're just going to go ahead and put about a half a cup on here. I think we had probably two thirds. I think that's plenty. Okay, don't they look good? Let me put this down so you guys can see them. Oh man, you talk about yum. All right, so now what we're gonna do is get our plastic wrap. We're gonna just gently put it on each one of these containers. And I'm gonna let them go two to four hours. And then we will be back to do the rest of the recipe. So this, that will be really a lot of fun. And you know, I really enjoy, I really enjoy using old recipes and uh, old recipe books because I think it's important that we keep traditions alive. Okay guys. Here we are with our beautiful strawberries. And we will see you in two to four hours. Okay, so we're back. I want you to have a good look at what the strawberries look like now that they have boiled for five minutes. Look at all the juice in there. Okay, so I don't know how many jars I'm actually gonna get out of this. Uh, it's always 
kind of a uh, mystery. I'm thinking maybe four quarts. Um, so we will go with that. Go ahead and put my lid somewhere here. I don't want to get my... There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do... Start filling my jars. And I'm going to go ahead and fill with... Do put this down so you actually see what I'm doing. There you go. Fill the strawberries. I'll bring this over here. And then I'll put the juice in. And this was boy, it's really nice. Okay, that's where I'm gonna go with that one. I'm hoping I get at least Two cups in each. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Now, the strawberries are a little bit softer, of course, because they have boiled, but they'll keep their color. Mm, it's so pretty, isn't it? And they'll keep their flavor for quite a while in these candy jars. You might be wondering why I'm not filling them all the way up. It's because I'm trying to go with <clears throat> two cups, and then I'll fill the rest of the way. Because we're going to put juice in there, too. I'm probably not going to have to have that thin syrup that I made, which is fine because I can always just freeze it and use it for something else that comes in, like peaches or um, cherries or plums. Because it's a simple syrup, and it can be used for anything, pears. You name it. All right. Wow, this wonderful juice in here. I may just I may can some strawberry juice too. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and bring back this one. Put a few more strawberries in. So I'm gonna get three quarts, which would be six pints. Which is wonderful. Okay. So that means three strawberry pies, which is probably what you would get if you uh, just used them fresh and made your strawberry pie. Like the Shoney strawberry pie that they used to have on the market. I don't know if you guys know what that is anymore, but it was a really great pie, which is very popular in the 80s and 90s at Shoney's. All right, I'm going to give this a one inch headspace. Look at the color. Just the color of this juice is amazing. Oops. Might be able to get a, a quart of strawberry juice too so let me just see what I can do over there now I've got to wipe these rims off because this is very sticky let me walk around here so I'm not in front of the camera okay. so yeah this is really sticky Okay, let's see what we got here. And I can actually use the strawberry juice or jelly. <laughs> and to this, I'm actually going to add some of the thin syrup. Let me stick this over here. Out of the way, just to make this a full a full jar. Wow. And that's perfectly fine adding the simple syrup to this. Might add it to a couple of the, these others too because it looks like that foam is settling a little. Okay. So I did get four quarts. I'm going to move my water bath can over here. Go ahead and put it on high. I've had it simmering. I've had it simmering on low, so it is warm. 
All right, and we are going to go ahead and wipe these jars off. I've got some water right here. Sticky, sticky. My hands are sticky. <laughs> Now you can use a, a clean uh, wash rag or dishcloth or whatever you want to. I always prefer a paper towel. I don't know why. That's what I've always used um, when I've canned. And we are just wiping all around the where the ring will go and the top here where your lid is going to adhere or seal. And you want to do that because any kind of blemish or a piece of uh, food like a strawberry or a little teeny bit of strawberry or a juice or something could uh, make it so it doesn't seal. Alrighty. Oh wow. Hand tight. That's all you need. And let's see here. I need to... I've got the rack in here that holds them so I gotta lift that up. Just gonna put these in here. One at a time. All right, let's work on these two. Oops, see how sticky it is. <laughs> all right. See, that's what's on there. That is strawberry juice, guys, and we want that off of there so we can definitely have a good seal. Now this is um, your quartz, of course, and it's going to be 15 minutes in the water bath canner. If it were pints, it would be 10. And I like to just make sure that we are nice and clean there. Okay. And something else that I do, I don't know if every canner does this, but I like to make sure that I have a, um, enough jars in there to fill my space. I'm trying to get this other, huh, get up there. Okay, there we go. I just had to work my little, my rack. So what I'm going to do is put that right there because you don't want these to tip over. And I'm going to go ahead and put a, I call it a ghost jar, one there and one there. And what that'll do is ensure that they don't tip over and crack. And I'll just use the jars that I've got here. They're already filled with water. And I'll just set them down there. There we go. In there. Okay. I don't think I'm going to need that other one. All right. So here we go. And we are going to go ahead and put the lid on this. And I'm going to let it simmer until it comes to a full rolling boil. And when that happens, I will time it for 15 minutes, take it off the heat, just slide it off. And um, then in about 10 minutes after that, you'll take them out because you don't want it to cook too much because it'll make mush. And that's for anything that you use for a water bath canner. So I'll be right back. Hey guys. Well, I'm finished uh, water bathing my water bath canning my strawberries. There they are. Look how pretty. Look at the color. Amazing, huh? Let's see. I'll pick one up here to show you. They're a little warm still. They've been, uh, well, they've been cooling for about almost an hour, but they're, they're still warm. Let's see. Look at the color on that. Isn't that amazing? And they've all sealed. <laughs> Tomorrow, I am, am going to make a pie. And so I'll, I'll have a different video. I said I was going to try to do that with this video, but it would just be too long. Look at the color on that juice. Look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? I wish I could get some light through it, but that is just really dark. I'm going to make some jelly. 
with that. So maybe I'll do a video on that. It'll be my strawberry collection. <laughs> well, listen, you guys have a great evening. And I hope you'll um, like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you'll try to can some strawberries. Have a great evening. Bye.